Good morning, my stitchy friends. Welcome to the Needle Bug. This is Karen. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about stitching on linen. I had quite a few people request uh, for a demonstration of how to stitch on linen, so we're going to work on that today. I'm going to make the assumption that you are all stitchers and that you already stitch on eight o'clock. And first things first, I think we'll look a little bit at what the differences are. Okay. Now, we all, you're all, I'm sure, familiar with Ada Cloth. And let's look at a piece I have here. Okay. And of course, Ada is all the blocks. And when you stitch on this, you're stitching one or two threads whatever your count is or your and your choice is and you're stitching in every hole okay so you're stitching over each block into every hole so it's pretty straightforward pretty easy most people start on eight o'clock okay um i'll move this a little bit and here's some of the x's just to give you a little demonstration of um, what it looks like. Now this is actually an 11 count fabric and I got this so that it was big enough to use for some demonstrations and I only used one strand of floss on it so you can see how the X's get on Ada cloth. So what I would like you to notice is the weave. Okay, on your Ada cloth you have basically four threads in each block going vert vertically and four threads in each block going horizontally. And that's what makes your, um, that's what makes up each little, each little block, okay, that you're stitching. And when you're doing quarter stitches or three quarter stitches, what you're doing is piercing in the center. Or when you're doing your pin stitch, you're piercing in the center. And that's relatively easy to do. So that's pretty much eight o'clock. All right. Just keep in mind this weave. Okay. Now we're going to look at a piece of Lugana. So I guess my question to some of you um, is do you stitch or have you stitched on? an even weave fabric. If you've stitched on an even weave fabric over two threads, you can very easily stitch on linen. Okay, so just keep that in mind. But let's talk a little bit about an even weave. And even weaves are fabrics such as, well, let me say this first. All of the fabrics that we stitch on are even weave unless it's otherwise stated. There are some linens out there that are specifically stated as uneven weave, like your 5260. Um, it says, oh, I can't remember the manufacturer, but Lakeside Linens dyes a 5260. That's an uneven weave because it, it tells you it's 52 threads to the inch in one direction and 60 threads to the inch in the other direction. Hence, why it's stated that way as the count is 5260. When you see Lugana 25 count, Lugana 32 count, Lugana 20 count, that's telling you that there are 20 threads, 25 threads, 32 threads, whatever that number is, both horizontally and vertically, so that is an even weave fabric. The same with linen. If it's 32 count linen, for example, there are 32 threads, both horizontally and vertically. So therefore, it's an even weave. The only difference between the two is the fibers that it's manufactured from. Lugana, Jobelin, um, those are the two two most popular. There's many others out there. Um, Linda Cloth, Davos, 
Um, though, you know, those are the ones that come quickly to my mind. They're manufactured with either 100% cotton or a cotton and viscose blend or a cotton and polyester blend, whereas linen is just linen. Linen is manufactured from flax. Flax is spun into the linen thread, and that's what's used to weave the fabric. That's the difference between your even weaves and linen. The weave, however, is just the same. Okay, so let's look at this piece of Lugana here. You can see in the weave of the fabric, let's look at vertically first. It's an over thread and under thread. Then it goes over, under, over, under, over, under. The same way with horizontally. Okay, your threads are going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. Oops, sorry, should have did it up here a little bit. Over, under, over, under, over, under. So it's one thread, one strand of the fiber over one strand of the fiber going in both directions that gives you the weave, the over, under weave of the fabric. Okay. Linen is going to be woven exactly the same way. What's the biggest difference? The biggest difference is the fact that on your even weaves, on your Lugana, on your Jobelin, all of these fabric threads are the same thickness throughout your whole piece. On your linen, and I'm just going to move this out of the way, all your fabric threads are not necessarily the same thickness. You know, you can see places here where it's a little thinner than here next to it. Okay, but can you see, can you see under, over, under, over, under, over. The weave is the same. It's one strand and it's woven over, under in both directions. Okay. Make sense? So, if you've stitched on an even weave, you would have no problem stitching on a piece of linen. Okay? The weave is the same. The weave is what dictates your stitching. Now, A lot of us that stitch heaven and earth designs are using Lugana, are using Jobelin, are using Easy Grid or Easy Count. Those are all even weaves. Those are all woven in this manner where all the threads are even Stevens, even the thicknesses are the same. And what you're doing is you're coming up, going down just over one fabric thread. Okay. On and you can do the same thing on linen. In fact, <laughs> back many years ago when I first had my first piece of this kind of fabric, I didn't realize that you could stitch over two. And I I think I was making a bread cover at the time and it was 28 count. And of course, I stitched it over one and couldn't figure out why my design was so small when on the picture it looked so much larger. Well, I was stitching it over one when I should have been stitching it over two. Okay, so I'm going to use this as an example here and let me find, here it is, my threaded needle just because you can see it just a little bit better. And then we'll move to the piece of linen, okay? But I want to use this as the example to show you, um, oops, okay, should have attached this to the frame, but I didn't, okay. 
when you're starting okay let me go up here i'm out of the here we go when you're starting your thread okay do you see you want to find you want to okay figure out your starting point obviously but your first stitch needs to be at a spot where your horizontal um pardon me your vertical thread is on top of the horizontal thread so you would bring your needle up right here okay and you're going and then we'll cross so i just wanted to show you that feature on a piece of lugana and then i'm going to move to a piece of linen all right but you can see here we go i'm looking at my screen here and not my piece of fabric you can see that i'm going to come up at a spot where my vertical thread is on top of the horizontal thread that's going to be my first stitch the reason you do that is because that is going to help lock your stitch in place so that it doesn't slip underneath the fabric threads okay so let's look at a piece of linen all right and let's do some practicing here on a piece of linen same thing we're going to start by doing going down okay we're going to come up at a place where it's a vertical thread on top of the horizontal thread all right okay now that's probably a little further away than what it needs to be but it really doesn't matter this is just for a demo so the premise here and I'm only stitching with one thread at this point in time so that you can see it a little better the term one over two means one strand of floss over two threads in the fabric so in stitching on linen and stitching on even weave what you're be going to be counting is fabric threads you're not you're not going to be counting squares you're going to be counting fabric threads so one over two as i said is one strand of floss over two threads of fabric so i already have the bottom came up for the bottom the bottom leg of my stitch i'm going to count up two threads okay or the other way to count that is skip a hole use the next hole if holes is easier for you to count my head works in threads but holes is fine okay so we don't want a straight up and down stitch so we need to go over one two this is our point of going down Oops, sorry lost my needle here this is our point of going down and as you see i'm at a spot where my threads are a bit thicker and i chose this on purpose so that you can see a difference okay so the other way I can find that spot instead of going one, two, and then one, two, is to go the center and then up one more. Okay, and there. There we go. Okay, so you're going to pull it through. That's the first leg of your stitch. All right, to start the second leg, you're going to come down. You're going to come down two threads. 
See, and I have a real skinny thread next year. This is what makes it difficult for some people or scary for some people. You count those skinny, skinny threads just like you count all the other threads. All right? Just keep that in mind. Okay? So I'm going to come up. Okay? And there you can see right next to it, there's a really skinny thread. Okay? And then the last part of my X is going to be two threads up in this upper corner. Okay? That's essentially how you do an X. My next X is going to incorporate that skinny thread. So I'm going to come up here in the bottom. Okay, I'm using the same hole there. I'm going to count over two. So once you have your first X in, it gets easier. So I'm going to count over two threads. So I'm going to count the skinny thread and the next thread. And I'm going to go down. So that's leg number one. I'm going to come down two threads and come up. So that's leg number two. And go down in the corner. So once the first X is in, it gets a bit easier. So the same thing. Come up in this corner. I'm at a bit of an awkward angle here, so bear with me. Okay, come up in this corner. Go up here to the top. Count over two. And come down two threads. And don't pull your needle back out when a thread catches in your finger. <laughs> and then go down two threads. Come back up. Go down in the top corner, up top again. Okay. Now, that's crossing one X at a time. You do it the same way. Let me just do a few of, some people like to go across the row and back the row. Now, this is not using a sewing method, folks. This is doing stick and stab. Um, I don't like the way my stitches lay doing a sewing method, so I do not do that. Um, there are demos out there that demonstrate that, so we're going to forego that here. Okay. So if I want to do all of my first leg across, it's just the same. Okay, count over two threads, come down two threads. Now, instead of crossing my X, I'm going to go back up here and count over two threads or skip a hole, use the next hole. Come up here. Same thing. Sorry about that. I keep catching my finger in the thread. Okay. Same thing though. I'm going to come over one, two, and that can be either threads or holes, whichever you prefer to count. Let's do one more. Come up here. One, two, go down, and then this one we're just going to go back across. Back across is easy because our our um, counting of the two threads is already established. So now all we need to do is cross the X's. Okay. Oh, I keep catching my finger. Maybe I should make my thread a little longer then I won't catch it. <laughs> no, that's being smart. Okay. Here we go. So now we're back. Okay. So I will say once your first row is established, the rest becomes easier. Okay. So let's start back over here. To do the next row, you're going to count down. I like to work from the bot from the top down. So if you work from the bottom up, you would count up two threads and your next stitch would be here. 
All right, I like to do bottom down. So I'm going to count down two threads. Now my counting becomes much easier. It's already established for me. Did I go to, oh, look at that, I went, I went three. Go back out here, get it right. Okay. One, two. All right. So I'm already established because all these stitches are already over two. Now you can see here a little bit how this stitch, this X, is a little bit skinnier than this X. When stitching on linen, that's going to happen. And don't let that get you all fussed up because what's going to happen is you have the thicker X's that make up for these skinnier X's. And it's still going to come out to, if you're stitching, say, on 36 count, it's going to come out to 18 stitches in an inch. Okay? Just some are going to be thicker than others. So it's going to come out to the correct count. All right, so now my top is going to go down in this bottom leg here. All right, I'm going to come back down. All I have to do here is count over to. And then I can do my preferred way. I can either cross this X or I can go across like this because my X's are my my um, over two is already established. Okay. So I can go across and it gets it's just very simple. You know, just go in the holes, uh, the top hole that's already there. Oh, a little knot. There we go. Okay. And then you would go back and cross them. And that's really the easiest part because all everything is already there. You're just going in your existing holes. Well. This is why I stitch two-handed a lot of times because then I'm not pulling my um, needle back out. Okay, here we go. All right, so that's, and you just continue to work in that manner, changing colors or putting new colors wherever you need to. Um, that's stitching on linen. Now, I'm going to make my thread a little bit longer so that I get two threads. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to come again. Oops, let's see here. Again to where it's an over as opposed to an under. Okay, so when you're stitching, what I just did here is one over two. Two over two is two strands of floss. Okay, so here we have two strands of floss. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go over two. So I want you to be able to see the difference in the thickness and the coverage. All right. So the process is the same. It's just the number of strands of floss is different. Okay. See how much thicker that is? or denser or whatever word you want to use your coverage now a lot of people will do what they call railroading which is where they will go between the two strands so that when you pull down those threads lay next to each other okay that's called railroading you go between the two threads 
So when you pull down, they lay next to each other. There we go. Or you can use a laying tool. You could use a trolley needle. Or you could just use your finger. The, uh, when stitching with two strands, the object is you want your, your threads to lay side by side as much as possible because that gives you the better coverage. Okay, but for, for right now I'm not really going to worry about that. Uh, I just wanted to give you a demonstration of how this all works. Okay, but really bottom line is this is all there is to it. Okay. And you see how two threads gives much better coverage than just one thread. All right. So folks, that's stitching on linen. As easy as that. Nothing to fear. Give it a try. If you have questions, please leave it in the comments below and I will try my very best to answer them for you. Um, but do try it and don't don't let it scare you because it's really not that difficult. Like I said, the only difference is you're going to count fabric threads or fabric holes, whichever is easier for you. Um, and you're going to work over two instead of your blocks on eight o'clock where you're working over each block. So I'm going to call this finished for today. Um, again, leave comments, leave your comments below and I will be more than happy to try and answer any more of your questions. I hope this helps and I will say bye until next time. Happy stitching.